What's up, Ray Mob? Yes, I'm in the gym, as I always am. That sounded so ghetto, as I am with him. But I, I really am in the gym frequently. Um, Cause you know, you just gotta keep your body right. You know what I'm saying? And you just, you know, help as well. If you feel good, you look good. You be able to think on a clearer mind. You know, it's just so many benefits. You wanna eat healthy, you wanna work out at least. If you don't be lazy, y'all, at least work out once a week. You gotta move your body. The more you work out and the less you eat. No, yeah, that's what I do. I eat less and I work out more so I can at least stay toned. You know what I'm saying? But it's not easy, but it's doable. But nevertheless, we're not here to talk about working out. What we are here to talk about is, this is just strictly my opinion, but I think that now it is a lot of double broke friend that's going on in the industry, right? But I feel like, I think the rules and regulations they have for new carriers is out of control as far as, they make it harder for new carriers and now they're trying to make it harder for dispatchers. Now, oh, if you dispatch more than one company, um, you may have to have a surety bond and it's just so much going on. They always attacking dispatchers. They got so many restrictions for new carriers and carriers as a whole. It's already expensive enough to be a carrier. Like, it's just crazy. And the, to me, my opinion, who we really need to be getting at, who they really need to be getting on is these damn brokers. Listen, these brokers really do be getting away with a lot. Listen, number one, hold on, let me start my little work out. Let me start something before I get into it. So number one, I'm gonna trade you, y'all. So number one, they oh so number one they are not paying for detention um so detention is if a carrier stays at a shipper or receiver past the appointment time after a certain amount of hours the broker is supposed to pay for that time that they have been sitting there they will make all types of excuses of why they can't pay sometimes um layovers if the carrier have to stay overnight they will make excuses of why they can't pay for that or sometimes they will even change the amount of how much they are supposed to pay now i'm just speaking on, about bad brokers now the good brokers just the bad brokers also they post those that they don't have um they may say hey i have this load whole time they don't even have the load um secondly or well, another one is that they'll say hey um you complete a load with the broker. They send you the rate con. Everything is complete. Your carrier is going to pick up this shipment. Then they'll call you out the blue like, hey, I just got a call. We apologize. Oops, sorry. <laughs> we apologize, but the shipper canceled this load. But in reality, sometimes what actually happened is another carrier called, negotiated the rate to something lower, and they gave it to them instead. I done seen that happen plenty of times. Trust me. It's just so much bullshit that brokers do that they need to get held accountable for. Yes, you can file a claim against their bond. But I feel like something else may be held, held, uh, they need to be held accountable for because they always own dispatchers asses. Oh, they need a... They need to do this, and they, didn't, they need this, and they need that. Oh, carriers, they have so many rules and regulations for carriers. Let's talk about brokers, okay? Another time. And hey, y'all, please don't, please don't think I'm being racist when I say this, because I'm really not. I'm just stating my truth, stating the truth. Um, eight times out of 10, if a broker has a strong, Arab accent, and I'm not even trying to be funny, I'm being dead serious. Eight times out of ten, it's something either wrong with that broker, something wrong with that load, and that happens typically with power only trailers. So, say if you're a power only truck and you're looking for a trailer, <clears throat> well, tra well, trailers you don't gotta they don't gotta pay. Well, some trailers do pay and some don't, but I'll get into that in another video. But a lot of the Arab. They be on some funny business. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not even gonna lie. Another sign that you're dealing with a bad broker is too many numbers that don't work. By you getting too many numbers that don't work for them, flag on the play. 
as a red flag. They only want an email. They don't have like a legit number for them. But they can send out an email, but they can't have a number. Because I'm more of a call type person. Like, I like to call. Like, I'll email too, but if, they're getting, if it's getting serious and, you know, with business, I would rather call because emails can be misinterpreted in so many ways. I don't know how you worded things. So, I'm a, I'd rather call you. Even if I'm emailing a broker, if I'm emailing a shipper, what's your best contact information? Let me, I need to call you. That's all. So, especially if it's a misunderstanding, I definitely would like to talk over the phone. Y'all, there's so many red flags, but those are just a few. But there are some, those are a lot of good brokers out there, but it's a lot of bad ones too. And just stay on point, be cautious of everything, make sure you're reading double times. And then when a broker try to get over on you, stay on them, don't give up. Like if you got a claim against their bond, continue to check in on call keep on calling the insurance company making sure that the process or they tell you to, um it, it'll take up to three business days that third business day you should be calling the insurance company don't give up because sometimes we be so consumed with our day that we will forget about you know situations like no make sure you stay on their tails about anything that went wrong so it can be corrected paid whatever the solution is make sure you stay on it now as a carrier or as a dispatcher, you can always go to DAT and go to um, the directory and leave a comment under a broker's um, profile if they did and leave your review. But, boo, we need something else better. <laughs> now, because a broker cannot like something that a carrier did during the process of booking the load or during the process of them transporting this load to point A to point B for them. And you know what they can do? They can go to carrier 411 and put in however they feel or what the carrier did. And guess what? When a carrier tries to book something else with another broker, they're going to see that on their profile. Oh, you had, you fell off this lane. Or, oh, no, you did this because another broker have did that. And, and they couldn't even be telling the absolute truth. Who knows? We need something else in place for these brokers now. So what are y'all thoughts on bad brokers? Do y'all feel as though that they should have more than just filing against their bond, um, putting a bad review on that board? Like, don't y'all feel like, or do y'all feel as though something else should be in place when it comes to brokering and these double brokering? Because they are the ones that be double brokering. And they are the ones that do majority of the scamming. Like, <laughs> brokers be scamming for real. <clears throat> So, and let's not get on how much they paying for these um for these loads. Brokers be scam. They the real scammers. They trying to get on. Oh, dispatchers. They need this carrier. That are, let's get on these brokers. Brokers are the scammers. <laughs> what are y'all thoughts? Also, if y'all had any situations or dealings that was kind of hectic, drop in the comments below. If you don't mind sharing, please. I would love to hear from carriers, from dispatchers. Like, what they've been through through their whole journey of dealing with brokers, just dealing with different type of people in this trucking industry, if you don't mind sharing. Also, guys, guess what? I have some great news to drop to you guys. So, when I get consultations, I always get people like, hey, Ashley, I want to start dispatching, but I don't know how. I don't know where to start, what to do first. So, guess what I did? I have created the ultimate are you ready to dispatch ebook? And guess what? It is free of charge until August the 11th. The only thing you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel, this one right here, and also subscribe to my website, which is readylogistics.com. Click the download button and it will come directly to your email and I will drop it down below as well. On my channel, I do tell the truth about dispatching. Like, this is not a get rich quick scheme overnight. No, it's not. But the truck industry do, can, <laughs> if you really put in the work, generational wealth. You can have freedom of time. I'm not on somebody's clock every day. They got to tell me what to do. When I can go to lunch, when I can't. Can I get time off? Can I get PC? I don't go through none of that. I am in control of my own paycheck. And that's the greatest thing for me to have the ability to be able to be in control of how much I make. That's me. So if you're like me 
and you have an entrepreneurial spirit and you don't mind a little challenge because you see the you see you have a vision for your life and for your kids and for your family you want to create generational wealth click the link in that bio and if you want to know click the link in that bio and so you can you know have an idea of how to get started you know what you need to get started once again this ebook is free of charge yeah not so much on my nails i know i need my nails and i'm going tomorrow <laughs> I, i'm going to nail salon tomorrow but this ebook is free of charge you hear me until august the 11th i love you guys thank you so much for your continuous support if you can like share comment this video and also you already know if you've been ready you don't gotta get